All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is February 1st, 2023. Oh, and it's our dear brother Dennis's birthday down in Florida. Just a quick little shout out for our brother. Well, guys, today we're going to have some fun. Um, I haven't decided what the title of the video is yet. You know, sometimes I bring that up, but uh, this time I'm not sure what to call it. But what I can say is you're going to love it because in the in the recent videos and in particular this last one <coughs> excuse me we've started to to realize and be able to break down this beginning portion of events related to the people not related so much to the events you know we know there's an escape we know there's a wedding uh right and then we know there's a worker group but there's this sequence of events within those people that seemed kind of confusing for quite a while. We know it's 50 days first, then it's the 14 years of tribulation, seven of seals, seven of trumpets, and then the 50th and final jubilee. And we've understood these things, and we've had a lot of focus in the beginning, this 50-day portion, and in particular, even the beginning of the 50 day portion that first week to the eighth day of and then the 40 days of the son of man starting and this is something we've been focusing on and i believe it's for more than one reason as i'm sure many of you who've been around at least for a little while understand because there is clearly something that's been going on in this ministry for a while and it just it, it just as we're getting so close to this date this period of time in human history when we know this is all about to begin, I find it fascinating that that the the draw in the revelation that's being given through this ministry is really bringing in the focus to this portion, and in particular, this worker group portion that will be here with the Son of Man. You're going to see they will have no part in the wedding, but as explained in the last video, there is a special event for them because they couldn't be at the wedding. We're going to delve into more of that and many other things as well. And you guys are going to love it. We're going to bring about more revelation, more typologies to bring about the understanding of this period of time. And it's awesome. You guys know that, uh, you know, one of the ways it works for me is I, I don't know how to explain it. Somebody said it could be because of the water, right? Because it happens a lot when I'm in the shower. Over the years, I've told so many stories of, of sudden moments of, of, oh my goodness. And I was in the shower and I was in prayer and I was asking the Lord. And just all of a sudden, the thought comes to my mind and bang, I knew that's what it was. You know, it happened with the revelation of the 14 years and, and realizing that the Lord returns feet down at the end of 13 and then he fulfills that final year. And I'm, I remember that one like yesterday. It was so incredible because, because it all of a sudden, as soon as I it it hit my spirit, I knew a half dozen pieces of scripture that showed thirteen, and then here fulfilling the final year, and I just it just they all went brrr, right through my mind, and I knew it, and so I came out and I went and seeked it and I searched it out and absolutely it was one hundred percent true, and so. A lot of moments have happened like that over the years, as you guys know, including the prayer with, jo with that Jodell ended up uh, responding to, and nobody on earth knew that I had said it um, so many times. Well, this was another one of those events. Maybe not quite as grand. I'll definitely say not as grand as those, but it was another one of those events, and you're going to see all about it here today. And <laughs> when it hit me, I knew it even without going to see, to search it because I knew where it was and it was immediately after the wedding. It's so awesome. And then what happens, you know, it's these little confirmations that the Lord gives. Um, our brother Roy had sent me a, a private message in the forum. Uh, when you guys hear me talking about the forum, by the way, if you're new, we have a website right here, ministryrevealed.com. You can go there, you can sign up to the forum for free take you a few seconds and there's over 1,000, 1,100 people from all over the world and we're sharing news and prayer requests and info and, and Bible studies and seeking and searching. It's awesome. 
And our, our brother Roy sent me a private message about something with uh, the baptism and in, in, uh, sorry, the circumcision and things going on with John the Baptist. And when he had looked into it, he saw that there was this other portion that looked separate from the first portion. And it was awesome because even though we went into it and I, I wasn't able to see exactly where where he was showing and what he was what he was catching there was a tidbit within it and when i first read it when he shared it with me i knew that it was just another confirmation because i had just had this revelation in the shower and that's what i'm going to share that's i shared in the in the forum today uh somebody had asked if there was another video coming and like i said i'm going to keep doing this till we go so it's always four to five days and occasionally we'll have a live show um, and, and or occasionally a live show over on uh, Interrupts 165 with Mike and those guys. And, uh, you know, we'll keep doing this right to the end. So definitely, as I said, there would be another one. And here we are. It's exciting. And I think you guys are going to love it, especially those who are sensing this understanding of being a worker. <laughs> it's going to be over the top, guys. Could you imagine? Like, we, we know where we are right now, right? We're here in February, on February 1st, and the New Year of Trees is right here. This is the end of the 70 years for the New Year of Trees, and Nisan is the end of the true end of the 70th year for Israel coming into the land. This is it. This is, this is the most it I could ever imagine to understand. Have we been here before? Yeah, of course we've been here before. For thousands of years, people have been here before thinking it was the time. But we have been given the revelation of the open books. And it's mind blowing. It is so awesome. And we're gonna share more of that revelation, understanding these typologies and these types and shadows that are all throughout the scriptures, revealing what was, which is the Old Testament since creation, which is revealing the is from Christ until the moment of the escape that tell us the is to come. It is incredible. So those are some of the things we're going to go into. I'm just going to show you guys uh, the updated chart to really help people get an understanding, um, to be able to visualize. I know sometimes it's hard for people to follow without being able to see something when we're talking about a certain count and understanding 70 years for Israel. I'm going to show you that chart, and uh, yeah, we're going to have a great time going through this. It's so exciting. For anybody that's new to the ministry, this is where most people fast forward, unless they're new to the ministry. But see, I always add new tidbits. You don't want to always fast forward, right? Come to this playlist if you're new. If you're new to this ministry, come to this one right here, the Revealed End Time Study Note Series. This is what started it all. It all began with this one right here, the revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to. You're gonna see on certain videos, like in the intro series here, you're gonna see printouts, things that I'm reading from. You could always go into the description box under the video and you can print these things out so you can make notes, you can follow along, you can keep them for your own notes, uh, to study, to share with people. You can also go to ministryrevealed.com and we have a book you can download the PDF for free in five languages. Yes, five languages. There's the book on audio in English as well. That's on the website. And if you want a paperback, then you can always go to Amazon as well. And these are the intros to things that are more detailed in the book. And we've got many other videos as you go through the list of videos here on YouTube or on the website that delve deeper and deeper and deeper and reveal more and more and more since these things have been revealed and even since these videos have been done. But this one right here is, is a Bible study, a 30 minute intro Bible study of who the gospels are speaking to. If you've ever wondered reading the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, why there's these discrepancies, why this is said a certain way and this is said a certain way. If you've ever wondered, which most people haven't even caught this, is, why does Jesus in Luke going to the cross, he's arrayed in a gorgeous robe, which means white, radiant, beautiful. When you read him going to the cross in Mark, he's arrayed in purple. When you read about the, him going to the cross in Matthew, he's arrayed in scarlet. 
Were these guys colorblind? Did, did somebody write it down wrong and the next one take a guess? No. You know, we see these stories everywhere. We see them in the stories of the crucifixion. We see that in Luke's gospel. It says, when Jesus' last words on the cross, Father, into your arms, I commend my spirit. But in Mark and Matthew, they both say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Which means left me behind. Why didn't it say it in Luke? Because Luke is the white, gorgeous robe. It's the pre-trib Gentile bride of Christ. Mark is the sleeping church, the or the world, the Gentiles grafted in with the house of Israel that's scattered throughout the world. And Matthew is the house of Judah. So Mark, you can say, is the house of Israel. It's the world. It's the Gentiles grafted in. And Matthew is to the house of Judah. And what's happened is you're going to notice this. You're going to see these things and begin to understand for the first time in your life the reason for these differences throughout the Gospels is all because of prophecy. It's going to blow you away. Their purpose is prophecy. It is all prophetic. And when you see it, you will never confuse. You will never be scratching your head as to why. Because the books are being opened and they have been here for the last five and a half years. Luke is to the bride of Christ, pre-trib. Mark is to the sleeping church, mid-trib. Matthew is to Judah, post-trib. You're going to find out that pre, mid, and post are all true. You're also going to realize in this second one that once you realize the the Gospels, in particular the Synoptic Gospels, are speaking to three different groups of people, you're going to realize the discourses are doing the same thing. And when you realize that, you're going to say, oh, my Lord, Luke's is so very different for a reason. And the reason for Luke's difference is because his is only talking about a 40, 50 day period of time. Luke, uh, uh, Mark's is speaking to the seven years of seals and Matthew to the seven years of trumpets. That's what you're going to begin to understand in this second Bible study intro, which is chapter two in the book. And it's the revelation of the end time years that the truth is 14 years. Don't sweat it. That is good news. If it was seven years, then we've got about seven more years and change to wait. But we don't because the end of days is 14 years. You see, do you ever wonder why the great multitude raptures at the end of the sixth seal and before the seventh? Because that's the mid trip, but it's not three and a half years in. It's in the seventh year of seals that the great multitude rapture comes in. It's going to blow your mind. And you're going to say, well, how did this all get missed? How did we not understand this? It wasn't time. Daniel told us that the books were sealed till the end. It's happening in this ministry. And it has been for five and a half years. And it's been getting more and more and more detailed. It's gotten so fantastic that we've been shown the revelation of creation and the revelation of creation is Luke, then Mark in the days, and Matthew are the thousands since Adam and Eve. It will blow your mind. This video right here is the third one we always recommend to beginners. It's a big video, but you're going to want to watch it because it will help you understand how this was missed. One, yes, because it wasn't time to be revealed, but two, And it's the big one, is it's all because of Matthew. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. The church for hundreds and hundreds of years has taught everybody from the foundation of the gospel of Matthew. And they've looked to Mark and even less to Luke as little fillers of perspective. Well, it's not true. They're literally speaking to different groups of people. And when you realize Everybody on earth, every Christian on earth has been taught from the foundation of Matthew. Everything they see, they try to correlate to a period that represents Jacob or Jacob's trouble, they would say, but that represents Judah. 
the house of Judah, the Jews. And what they've missed, because they've not understood who Mark was speaking to, is they've missed a seven-year portion for them. Just as the Jews didn't recognize Christ coming the first time, the church will not be ready for Christ when he comes for his pre-trip. Hello. You see? You'll see that pre, mid, and post are all true. You can come down here. You're going to begin to understand the seven churches of, of the book of Revelation revealed and how they play out and what their understanding is during the end of days. This, is no, this has been a huge mystery. People have been seeking for generations revealed here. You're going to see, we're going to talk about this in a little while. Uh, there's a great video here called Mystery of the Comma And. It sounds like the craziest thing, right? I'm literally talking about a word. After a word, there's a comma, and then the word and before the next thing is said. It's absolutely phenomenal. And this video will tell you why it's so important. And then, of course, this one right here is the one about the discourses revealed. Once you understand who the Gospels are speaking to, once you understand uh, that the tribulation is a 14-year period of time and there's a small piece of 50 days before, you're going to understand the discourses of Luke, Mark, and Matthew in order, and it's going to blow your mind. It's so incredible. I just, I, my, my hope had been, my prayer has always been to reach as many people as humanly possible. But if you think the churches are going to let me speak this, you've got another thing coming. So the greatest way to reach people all over the earth is YouTube, and for that I'm grateful. So. Let's get started. And we've got a, I've got a great one here for you guys right off the bat. You guys have heard me talking about this for a long time. In fact, it's probably close to five years now, somewhere around there, four and a half, five years, that I've been saying, I believe the escape, the pre-trib escape of the bride of Christ will happen when the world population, when that eight billionth child is born at that very moment at God's appointed time I believe at the new year of trees bang the pre-trib will happen and it'll be eight billion people I've talked about it many times I've explained years ago how it's connected to um uh this this way of looking at uh Revelation chapter 5 and the 10,000 times 10,000 and the thousands of thousands um, you know, if the thousands of thousands has a relation to, to, excuse me, the 144,000, which we see in, in Revelation, and the 10,000 times 10,000, you see, because it's thousands of thousands, the thousands of thousands are the ones that, that minister to the Father in heaven. They're related to the priestly line. They belong to the Father. And this is important. Let me go to it real quick, because... This is part of where the conversation is going to go because we've talked about this in relation to the priestly line. And what we're talking about is we know that, you see, and the number then was 10,000 times 10,000. Well, 10,000 times 10,000 is 100 million. And thousands of thousands, so not thousands times thousands, which would be, I think it's a million, it's thousands of thousands. So it's got to be less than a million. And the only number we have related to that is the 144,000. So we know there's a group of a priestly line of the 144, and there's another that's a mystery line, which we've talked a lot about, which relates to the beginning. They're going to be the ones following the Lord for 40 days when he shows up. They're the ones he's going to eat and serve. They're the ones that are going to remain during seals after his 40 days are done. But the 10,000 times 10,000 are those who are taken pre-trip okay and when i went into this in the past uh, a long time ago i realized that if it was 144 for the thousands of thousands and there was uh what uh, uh um the ten thousand times ten thousand then i had figured that that number was probably going to be a pre-trip group vanishing of 144 million people and at 144 million people vanishing, it would be about 1.8% of the population of the world. And that 1.8% of the population of the world would equal about 
10% of the world church that claims to be the church. Not, not just whimsical, you know, numbers that everybody throws around, but about 1.5 billion people claiming to be in Christ or to be with Christ. Okay. 10% goes first. That's that first fruits to the Lord. And so I've taught on this many times. And then, then we saw videos that people shared where, where they had understood there was a 10% going to the Lord first that they saw. We had another one uh, through Bob Jones, you know, many, many years ago. And he said that he saw about 2% going into heaven. And when he looked back, he saw about 98% not. And that was like, boom, it was so exciting to understand and to see what we had taught on. We found teachings on that people shared with us months and even a year or two later. It was so exciting. So now, why am I sharing this with you now? Well, because we know there's another well-known brother and a pastor out there who has very vivid dreams that the Lord uses him for. Now, has his timing been understood? <laughs> no. Nobody's timing has been fully understood, right? We know when the tribulation begins, this is the ministry that has the layout. We know how it's going to play out in the, in the overall picture and some of the details, okay? But we also are at a point now because we've been following and tracking probably one of the only ministries following and tracking the 70 years. We've understood it and we're going to prove it scripturally and go into detail on it again today. You're going to see it in the counts. This is why we are so expecting outside of the world events that we talked about in the last video that the ministry had known and understood before they took place are taking place. But 8 billion was a big one. And I've been talking about it for years on occasion. Well, have a listen to this. Dana Coverstone's new dream from less than a week ago. I'm going to play you a few seconds of it. Listen close. The dream began with a flipping of newspapers and headlines, but one prominent number was heralded there, and that was being, that being 8 billion. Uh, every night of the dream, every single night of the dream, I saw the headlines that said 8 billion, population 8 billion. Sometimes it was just spelled out B-I-L-L-I-O-N, and other times it was the, the, the words 8 billion and, and the number 8 billion. It kept appearing on the front page of the newspapers that I saw, okay? Uh, and they kept appearing on the front page. There you go. So in his newest dream vision that he had, let me bring my volume back. So in this newest dream that he had, he kept seeing the front page of papers every day that he had. It kept flipping and every front page said 8 billion, 8 billion population, 8 billion population, 8 billion. Wow. Do you think Dana Coverstone knows what we know about 8 billion? I don't think so. I was so excited. This was shared by a brother or sister. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was. Uh, this was so exciting. Talk about another confirmation, guys. Another confirmation from somebody that has no idea what we talk about. I loved it, man. That just got me fired up seeing that, right? Some people will say, remember, hey, wait a second. The population already passed 8 billion, right? If you go to this world meter and uh, you go by the UN, it already passed 8 billion people. But I told you guys before, that's not the only one that has a count. Look at the U.S. one. This is from the United States.gov, okay? From their website, it's not even at 8 billion yet. So what was the point? And when I spoke about this, why did I share it? Because this is such exciting news. And now with the confirmation, I've been saying then, if it wasn't in November, we were really looking at that time, right? Because these things that we were following and tracking. So we know when it hits 8 billion, the vanishing will take place. And the reason I was showing it was because the UN believes it was November 15th. Nobody knows exactly, right? So they had November 15th as the closest peg date. And the US one has it still short. <clears throat> the U.S. doesn't have it reaching 8 billion till about, I think, June. So why is this exciting? Because between November and June, it will most certainly have reached 8 billion 
people. And we've been talking about it for over four and a half years. And now, now, he gets a dream with the eight billion? To me, that's significant and that's exciting. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Let me close this off. Here's another little one. This is uh, one of our brothers shared us shared this with me uh, the other day. Um, let's see. He had posted it in the forum. Um, where was it? Oh, so you guys will remember this. In Luke 24, this is something we've shared on a number of times, right? This word perplexed. So the escape takes place. There's a perplexed. We showed how this word perplexed is also in in uh, second esdras right chapter 13 starting in verse 29 behold the days are coming when the most high will deliver those who are on the earth this is the pre-trib escape okay and then it says and bewilderment of mind shall come over those who dwell on the earth another word for for um perplexed is bewilderment what's it synonymous is the word bewilderment so you have an escape you have the pre-trib escape, you have the world in bewilderment, and then they plan to make war against each other. So they don't make war against each other right away because we know there's a 50-day period of time that takes place, and the war starts at the Red Horse Rider is where the 14 years begins, is at the Red Horse Rider. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. That's why Mark's discourse begins at nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Luke's is the portion that says, but before all these, right? Luke 21, verse 12, it starts off, I think, in verse 9 through 11, telling you these things that are going to come, but then it says, but before all these. So before nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, there are those who will escape all these things, right? Those who are accounted worthy, we're going to talk about that, those who are accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man, will be taken then it will be bewilderment of mind of everybody that's left and then they'll plan to make war against each other and that will happen at the end after the 50 days um uh, uh, uh after the 50 days which includes the right horse rider and then three days to the holy ghost anointing in another typology from acts right from john into luke into acts being played out so we've talked on this before and the reason i want to share it is our brother found in a chapter we have known, we've come to know very, very well, and that is in Luke chapter 9, right? We've been talking a lot about this, right? Sit down in company. We showed that this group are those who get to sit in the, in the special place at the meal during the wedding, right? And then it talks about, um, and then it came to pass about an eight days after these things, which relates to the Son of Man beginning his 40 days. Well, this is what our brother caught here. And it's right in the neighborhood. And look at where it is in Luke chapter 9, verse 7. And Harold the Tetrarch um, heard of all that was done by him, and he was perplexed. The word perplexed, the word itself, is used two times. It's pretty exciting, right? Again, another connection with this word perplexed, only used two times, not used in Mark not used in Matthew when we're talking in the Synoptic Gospels, and in fact, not even used in John in this case. What are both of these things connected to? Both of these things are two pieces of scripture that we show relate to the time of the escape and the 40 days of the Son of Man beginning. So that was another great little catch there by our brother to add that in. It's so exciting, guys. You see, and now we're going to talk a little bit about this, right? I'm going to I want to help those who are having trouble being able to see it really see what we're talking about here in relation to this 70 years and the chart and wording about how we found it that's connected to it because it's so exciting. <clears throat> okay, if you guys remember, of course you do, Leviticus 19, right? We we know this now. We have the revelation completed of Leviticus chapter 19. This piece right here, 23 to 25. And when you shall come into the land and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, okay? These are fruit-bearing trees, not just regular trees. 
Then shall you count the fruit thereof uncircumcised three years. So this is when they came into the land. For three years they couldn't. I'm going to explain how that plays out. It shall be as uncircumcised unto you. It shall not be eaten of. But in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be holy. So <clears throat> the fourth year is praise to the Lord. But he's also saying it's in their fourth year when they came into the land. Okay. But it wasn't yet theirs to take from. That's why the 70th year didn't happen back in 2018. There was a period of time that had to take place and be established first. So in the fourth year means it was the fourth year of the new year of trees, the food producing trees, the fruit producing trees. And in the fourth year, it was also the fourth year from Nisan of them being in, in the land, right? from when they had a nation and so forth, as well as a people and then their king or their leader. Well, I want to remind you guys in this that it says, and in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise the Lord with all. We all know that in the fifth year, it's theirs to eat. So from the fifth year forward, it was theirs. <clears throat> and that's where you get the 70 year count. The 70 year count started in the fifth year which meant from the fourth year, new year of trees, from that day forward, everything following would be theirs from those trees that were planted. So that meant in, in that year, that was the fifth year that was starting, 70 years equals new year of trees, 2023. But within it, it also says that it's in the year. So I'm going to help you guys see this more clearly. That within the year, means they were also in their fifth year, which means they're also in their 70th year because if this new year of trees is the 70th and it has to be in their 70th year, then Nisan is the beginning of their 71st year from when everything was allowed to then be theirs. But I want you guys to remember this, to praise all. You see, a celebration of thanksgiving for harvest, Merry praise it is rejoicing why do i bring this up because i want you guys to remember this right here because remember we were looking at this as the possibility after enoch and some other places right and saying maybe this is the beginning of the wedding and this is when the lord comes on the eighth day but you know it wasn't a hundred percent because we know something that's connected to the new year of trees the new year of trees is a celebration for Thanksgiving har of the Thanksgiving harvest. It's the harvest. It's the celebration of the first fruits. But it's more than that. Remember that? The Hebrew word 1984? To be clear, to shine, right? Remember like Luke's group? Those that would have white robes in Luke's group, right? Like Christ going to the cross. Enter your arms, I commend my spirit. It's the typology of the pre-trib bride. The tribulation colors are purple and scarlet. But what was the big thing? Give in marriage. Give in marriage. So there is a celebration harvest and a giving in marriage as the Gentile bride. So even though this came and went and people were like, oh man, don't forget this one is where the wedding was connected to. This one is what we've been following the most. This is the one we've been tracking now for two and a half years. And now that we have understood Leviticus completely, it is over the top exciting. Watch this. Watch this. Let's go to Luke chapter 13 and help nail it home for some people that were still wondering <coughs> and trying to track this time frame of understanding. Remember the parable of the fig tree, the barren fig tree? In Luke 13, starting in verse 6, we'll go down to verse, all the way down to verse 9. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. Okay? very important planted in his vineyard okay 
Oh, sorry, that wasn't the main word, though. Planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said unto the dresser of the vineyard, that's what I wanted, vineyard, not the dresser of his vineyard. So he's the vine dresser, the pruner, used one time, and it's the word 289. You guys, some of you guys will remember this. Said, behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this tree and find none cut it down why cumbereth it the ground this is the the main reason building up to the new year of trees in 2022 from the end of 21 is because we were considering this in connection with uh leviticus and this though is the is is the opposite end of leviticus leviticus is the beginning of the count luke 13 is the end of the count you'll see what i mean behold these three years i come and there's no fruit why come cut it down why cumbereth it the ground he answered and said unto him lord let it alone this year also till i shall dig it about and dung it and if it bear fruit well and if not then after that thou shall cut it down we have a video called Thou shalt cut it down. Okay? Why did this become so important? This is what brought us um, to the revelation of Leviticus chapter 19. How did this one come about first? I did a count. I did a count of Israel, or sorry, I did a count of the Sabbath years of rest for the land, right? Every seventh year from Leviticus, right? And knowing that the end of days is 14 years, which is seven years of seals to seven years of trumpets, I said, what if we counted in reverse and went all the way back through the number of Sabbaths, all of the seven year counts, all the way back to the time of Christ, all the way back. And you see, I just did dot, dot, dot. This is the new one I've done, dot, dot, dot. And then it goes back to the time of Christ. Well, what you're going to find out is something we were recently talking about is that Christ was born in year zero. Okay? Can, you can say conceived and born in one into zero. And what some people will debate, and this we, we touched on this in the previous video, that there was no year zero. Right? And do you guys remember how I was explaining it to you? Is that on the bc side of things they would say 1 bc and then the 365 days of the year would play out but on the ad side of things they play out the days of the year the 365 and then they say it's one so you see they go from one and then complete the year and then they complete the year and call it one that means there's a year zero that means there, there's a point, it may not be zero, go from 365 and start day one of 365. It's not an actual zero, but it goes 365th day and then day one of this coming year. This actually proves it. This is the actual evidence of it. And how do we know? Because again, 70 to 80 years, not 71 to 80 years. 78 to 80 years is 10 years. <laughs> That's the evidence. It's like, it's like 1999. And then you go to 2000 to 2001. You see, there, there was still a 2000. So it's like zero was still there as well because they count one, they say one, and then they have 365 days. And then you could say a zero because on the AD side of things, they count 365 before they call it one. So there is a year zero. But if somebody wants to say, oh, no, no, it's just not true, there's no year zero, then that's fine. Make this minus two make this minus one and make this minus one that's all it does so if you don't believe it you don't want to go with the year zero then don't go with the year zero but what happens is in either case this is the first sabbath at the time of christ that christ being born okay this is where he turns one two three in this year right in this year he completes year one year two year three and you count all the sabbaths and it brings you to 
289 sabbaths in the seventh year we are currently in it's awesome and and why did this matter well it was all about this finding of this number right here 289 when i discovered that word 289 i went and looked it up in the strong's concordance and i saw that 289 <laughs> was this word used one time and guess where it was used about the fig tree three years and then give it one more year this was exciting exciting news which led us to understand how the lord began the count when they came into the land and this is a count at the end of the 70. how do we prove it right here 289 289 sabbaths since the birth of christ to the one we're in right now now here's the issue some people will say well the jews said even we were talking about it that the jews show that the shemitah year the seven every seventh year is a shemitah year right sabbath or shemitah year the shemitah year for the jews went from the fall of 21 right tishri of 21 to tishri of 2022. the problem is they're counting from the wrong spot because the lord we now know and understand that the lord is going from nissan to nissan he starts his year he gave it to moses he spoke it everywhere the beginning of the year is nissan so we're going from nissan to nissan not from tishri to tishri but it goes a little bit further than that and it's all because of when israel came into the land you see and this is something we were recently talking about israel came into the land of course in 1948 right in 1948 israel came into the land but they never had elections until january 25th 1949. so until they have a leader they're not quote unquote a nation established yet they had no leader they had no government established it was all a temporary setup what happened on the 25th of 1949 On the 25th of January, right here, they held their elections and um, uh, um, David Ben-Gurion won. And then what did he do? On February 14th, they planted trees. On the new year of trees, he was seen and he went out and there was photo ops and they observed the first planting of trees. But this just begins the count of the new year of trees. When? 1949. When did he take office? Well, he didn't actually step into office and take over an office. See, the position became permanent on March 8th, 1949. March 8th, 1949. Do you think the Lord God is counting from the seventh of Adar for his start of things? No, he's counting from Nisan. So when did it officially count for them beginning as a nation being in their year? nissan of 1949 but after he had won the leadership the first year they planted trees was february 1949 so if you go to new year of trees 1950 one year of planting of trees was complete at the new year of trees 1950 and it would have still been in the first year because the first year didn't end until Nisan 1 of 1949. This is why Leviticus said it was in the fourth year, in the fifth year, because they planted before he had taken full office and it was permanent and the year began. That is why when we're saying we understand what Leviticus is saying now, we're telling you we understand what leviticus is saying so what about this whole thing with the fig tree generation you see it's when they came into the land when the jews came into the land the fig tree generation but we know that the truth is they had to they also had to establish the government and so it officially started in 1949 in nissan and not officially 
1948, on May 14th. On May 14th, 1948, they officially had a, had a land. They officially had people starting to move in. But it wasn't until March and officially Nissan that it began with their king or their leader, their prime minister. So this has been something that was very important for us to grasp. And when we go into Luke chapter 13, how do we know that this is related to the beginning, right? How do we know this is like the, the tail end of the 70 year count? Cut it down. It's gonna get cut down, right? The frustration, what's the frustration? Why is, why is the Lord frustrated in this typology after the three years and then giving it one more year? Because we know the Jews are in error. We know they're disobedient, right? Mark and Matthew talk about being in error all the time. That's the church and the world, and Matthew is for the Jews. We know they're in error. And what does it say? Three years, I'll give it one more year, and if not, thou shalt cut it down. When? He's talking to the vine dresser who's going to cut it down. When is he going to cut it down? Well, the number is 289. And the 289th Sabbath since the birth of Christ is exactly where we are right now. And what do you know happens at the end of this 289th year? Jerusalem, right? Israel, the Jews, Judah are compassed about and destroyed. Right? This is oh, this is Luke's discourse. Luke's discourse in Luke 21 tells us this exact same thing. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed by armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which be in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter here in, there into. For these be the days that vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. They're going to be surrounded and attacked and destroyed just as we've been talking about for over four years. We know this comes first. Remember what I said earlier? What does he say in verse 12? But before all these. Before nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. So what's he doing here? He's warning during the 40 days as the Son of Man that they're going to be compassed about, surrounded, and then destroyed. That it's not going to happen during his 40 days. It will happen after his 40 days, which would be the end of the total 47 of the 50. That At that point, they'll be surrounded. And after the 50th day, they're going to be destroyed. That is going to be the beginning of nation against nation. It's going to be the beginning of war against one another, city against city. This is that period during those 40, 50 days where they're planning to make war against each other. It's going to start in Jerusalem. So now let me show you this count. Turn down my feet a little bit. So now let me show you this count. So Nissan of 1948 to Nissan of 1949. Okay, everything's going from spring to spring. And so what do you have? Spring of 48 to spring of 49. What happened in February of 1949? Well, it starts first in 48. Israel became a nation. They had no king or government. Elections in January and took office in March of 1949. After January 1949, there was the first planting of trees on the New Year of Trees that happened in February. So if we go up here to... 1950, from spring of 49, Nissan of 49 to Nissan of 50, this from right here, from Nissan here, okay, remember, this is the beginning of Nissan, of, of the first year uh, of 1948, this is to Nissan of 1949, this starts Nissan of 49, this is to Nissan of 50, this is Nissan of 50, so this is the end and the start, it's the same, the same time, all right? So, they planted trees, and then they were now officially with a government in the land at Nissan of 1949. 
So in the first year of Nissan 1949 to Nissan 1950, in February, or, or at the New Year of Trees in 1950, year one of the New Year of Trees was complete. While still in the remaining month and a half or so of 1950 till Nissan. Then you've got Nissan of 50 to Nissan of 51. And at the New Year of Trees, two years was completed. 51 to 52, New Year of Trees of 52, while they're still in their third year, three years of New Year's of Trees was completed. 1952, Nissan to 1953, Nissan. At the New Year of Trees in 1953, four years was completed and given to the Lord. And then what did it say? 1953, so from after the, the New Year of Trees at the fourth year, you go to the New Year of Trees in the fifth year, and that whole portion of time is now theirs, and this was now theirs to eat from. So what happened? They completed one year in 1954 New Year of Trees for themselves, and Nissan won 1954, completed year one of the 70-year count. All of this is directly in accordance with Leviticus chapter 19 and with when they came into the land, yet still didn't have a government. So what happens? This is year one complete. This is year two complete. Go all the way up. All you got to do is add the numbers and you get to what? Nissan of 2022 to Nissan of 2023, 70 years will be complete of Israel in the land. But at the same time, it's also what? At the New Year of Trees, 2023 will be the 70th year to the Lord. All right, so that's what you get here. Nissan 1, 2023 begins the 14 years of tribulation, seven of seals, seven of trumpets. The New Year of Trees, in 2023, completed the 70 years of the Lord, and Nissan 1 completed the 70 years of Israel. And it just so happens to equal exactly 289 Shemitah years since the birth of Christ. You want to know how easy it is to calculate? <laughs> just take 2023, take 2023, and divide it by seven. Let me help you. Or sorry, take 200, uh, sorry, 2023 and divide it, you can also do by 289 and you get zero, right? Or the other way. It equals zero because it was year zero at the time of his birth. It's exactly 289 Shemitah years. It's awesome. And then, of course, you have Jerusalem completing 70 by June of 37, in the spring of 2037. 70th year of the Lord, New Year of Trees, 70th year of Israel, 70th year of Jerusalem ends it all. One starts it, one ends it, one pre-tribs it. It's awesome. It's all there. And what is this understood from? Scripture. It's all from Scripture. Remember, Luke 13 is saying when the fig tree will be cut down. So these years here that are being spoken about are right here. The Lord's saying, hey, I came one year. I came two years. I came three years. And what does he say at the end of three? Three years I've been coming and it's not producing any fruit. The vine dresser says, hey, give it one more year, and if not, cut it down. What happens after Israel completes 70? Jerusalem is cut down. They are the fig tree generation. Remember, it's Jews in the land of Israel right now. When we go back to Luke 21, we'll remember those difference, right, in the trees. All this stuff is so awesomely connected, the, right? The lesson of the fig tree. And he spake unto them a parable, behold the fig tree and all the trees. 
we showed that all the trees, this isn't the same as the Leviticus 19, all the trees, because these are leafing trees. They're not fruit-bearing trees. And when does this happen? Well, the fig trees are in spring, March into April, and all the trees are in March into April. Wh who's he saying this parable to? And he spake a parable unto them. All right, we've been talking about this lately. What was 21, Luke 21, verse 10? And he said unto them, nation against nation. Why does Luke jump in with his own black letter words at two places saying, speaking unto them as if it was Mark and Matthew? Do you know why? Because they equal the same time. When nation against nation begins, and nation against nation begins with the destruction of Jerusalem. It's the parable of the fig tree that's going to be cut down. And all the trees being all the nations. It will start at the fig tree, comma, and then all the trees. It will start in Jerusalem and then be World War III, nation against nation. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's understood. And I'll tell you this right now. There is no other 70 years left. Psalms 90 and 10 is vitally important to be able to understand it. You understand what I'm showing you? This is the end of that 70. Right here. It's the end of it. This is why we're excited. This is why we will continue to watch and pray and dig and dig and dig. You guys remember this one? Right? Uh, oh, this was uh, in relation to the fig tree. It didn't need to go there. I've already covered it. Now, again, with this, the shooting forth. Now, watch this. Let's go now and move to the to the next portion this this difference in these groups and when they go and so forth all right we've established now that there's the 70 that comes at the new year of trees and the 70 that ends at the time of nissan well what's the difference within these groups right you guys will remember this in luke 21 starting in verse 35 for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Kind of like what we see over here in Second Ezra, right? This bewilderment of mine that will come over though all those who dwell on the earth. Why? Because watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Does that mean this accounted worthy group is going to stay during any of this? Are they going to see the attack on Jerusalem? Are they going to see any of these things? No, they're not going to see any of them. This accounted worthy group is the pre-trib group, but there's another portion within them. Okay, This word for accounted worthy is used four times. However, there are only two times, and they're both in Luke, where it's accounted worthy. And there are two times where it's just count worthy. The count worthy are both in Matthew. The two accounted worthy are both in Luke. And when we go to the other one, accounted worthy in Luke, it's in Luke chapter 20. And you're going to start to understand why I'm bringing this up. Because we're talking about two separate groups of people. And if you remember um, uh, um, the comma and that I was bringing up near the beginning in those intro videos, you see it right here, uh, starting in Luke chapter 20, starting verse 34. And Jesus answering said unto them, the children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world, comma and. So there's a group that's accounted worthy to obtain that world. 
comma, and the resurrection of the dead. Two portions of people. I remember this was this was caught. This one was caught by our brother Jared, right? You guys remember me sharing this uh, several months ago. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world. Well, who are the accounted worthy? The accounted worthy are those that got to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That is the pre-trib group. That is everybody going pre-trib. But there's a comma and that distinguishes another group of people. And the resurrection from the dead. Neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels. Equal unto the angels. Look at that. One time. They're going to be like or equal unto the angels. Let that sink in, brothers and sisters. This is only said in Luke. Oh, the story is in Mark and the story is in Matthew. But once you understand who the Gospels are speaking to, you understand that they're different writings and different ways and Mark in error and Matthew in error. <clears throat> no condemnation, as Mike says, to Luke's group. They will be equal unto the angels. They're going to be like angels and equal unto them. And it says, and are the children of God. Who are the children of God? Of course, they are the co-heirs with Christ. Right? Those that are the sons of God. The children of God. The co-heirs with Christ. Those who are spirit-filled. But you see this? There's two groups. They're the accounted worthy and those who will have part in the resurrection from the dead. That's two groups of people. And that's important for us to remember because we know that there's a group of people that are part of the accounted worthy, but don't get to go. And some of you who might be new are saying, oh, that would suck, man. Accounted worthy, you're allowed to go, but why aren't you going? What do you mean? They were, they were supposed to go. They were worthy to go. They were, they were part of the accounted worthy. But they didn't get to go. Why? You guys all know this. I'm building it up for you guys. Because, of course, in 1 Peter chapter 1, that we like to go to a lot, is starting in verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fades not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept you see those who are protected listen to this to be a watcher in advance hello brothers and sisters are you watchers are you watch women and watchmen watchers in advance he's kept a group of watchmen who were watchmen in advance who will have a place reserved for them in heaven who are part of the inheritance as the sons of God? What does it say? Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the end of days. Right? We talked about this. Their joy and their, their rejoicing and so in love at, at, the, at the digging into and at the drawing closer and of the seeking and searching of Christ in all his truth. And then he's going to appear to them. And what do we know? They'll receive the end of their faith, even the salvation of their souls. But they're not taken. They're still here. You see, their revelation, they're being kept as watchmen for the end of days. This is that same group. This is that same group that are part of the resurrection of the dead. You're going to see, many of you guys know these parts. We're going to keep building it. So again, we know there are two in the resurrection of the dead. We know there are the seals workers. And from the last video, this was so awesome. We were able to understand that the Lord 
is going to let's go to it in luke chapter 14 we were able to show that there's a wedding feast in mark there is no parable of a wedding feast in matthew there is right the the foolish and wise virgins and then we know it's the one week wedding and that one in matthew is the end of the 14 years and then the seven day wedding this one is at the beginning of the 50 days and it is a seven day wedding the guests are going and there's a wedding we talked about when you're you see when thou art bidden of any man to a wedding so clearly there's a group going to the wedding don't sit down right sit not down in the highest room this is that word that's used three times those who will get to sit at the table so it's saying don't sit down in the highest room but sit down in the lowest room and if you're called by a friend to be invited to the highest room then you'll get to sit down and recline and meet and eat at the table in the lord's serving yep and the lord serving at that table it's for the highest honor that these people are going to receive but not everybody gets to go that's why it tells you to sit down in the lowest room don't get embarrassed and be sent down to the lowest room after thinking you got to go to the highest start in the lowest and if somebody comes great if not hey you're still there what did we show about this we showed that in these three places where the word is used and in relation to sitting in the highest room to the root word it brought us of course a little rehash of the last video it brought us of course back to luke chapter 9 see perplex is there brought us back to luke chapter 9 and it was about those who got to sit down there it is in companies of 50 which are those at the special party meal that get to recline and it was only used one time and it's here in luke this is the wedding party taking place okay this is a picture of the wedding taking place from luke chapter 14 it is the wedding and it is from day one of 50. and where are we talking about this wedding oh am i frozen oh no there we go let me make sure my clock is still going all right we're still going so what do we know about this wedding well what do we show tuba shavat tuba shavat given in marriage okay this is that wedding in the heavens now watch this it gets better and better and better we know that it connects with this wording as well it connects us to luke chapter 24. this is what we shared in the last video right here he is you know they were perplexed here are the two on the road to emmaus which i believe as i've shared before many times that these represent the tribe of dan and the tribe of ephraim that are missing from the 144,000, which led me through through research to believe that these two on the road to emmaus represent the 12,000 of Ephraim and the 12,000 of Dan, who are the seals workers and that are with the Lord for 40 days. Who are they? They are the ones who were worthy to be accounted worthy. They were part of the accounted worthy group, but they had to remain behind because they were chosen to be the worker group with the Lord. And when we went through this, we showed right here the third time that this word is used is right here and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them he took bread and blessed it and gave it and uh, uh, and break it and gave it to them the lord sat down and had a meal with them and served them he only does this to one group as we've shared many times from luke chapter 12 this group is the luke 24 group from right here when he says to be girded about we showed how it's connected to the 40 days when the son of man begins 
when he returns from the wedding that you open immediately, those servants whom the Lord cometh will find watching. Hello. Will find watching. Who are those? The watchmen. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down and will come and serve them. The second watch and third watch, he doesn't do it. That's the 144,000 and then those who work the millennial reign. The end of seals and then the end of trumpets is the third watch for the millennial reign. So we know this. We've understood it. We see when he returns from the wedding. We just saw that the wedding is referred to us right here, connected from Luke 14, connected into Luke chapter 9, connected to when he returns in Luke chapter 12. Well, guess what? This is where I had the aha moment. I had an incredible aha moment in the shower the night before last, two nights ago. And the reason I'm bringing it up, because you guys know that that's just generally where things happen for me. And here's what it was. I remembered the story here of the wedding feast, of course, that we had just taught on in the last video and showed those connections that showed that the workers who are going to follow the Lord for 40 days when he returns from the wedding and he's going to he's going to sit down and have a meal with them. Is another special meal that happens after the wedding. So how long is the wedding? The wedding is seven days. So we know he returns on the eighth day, right? And what did we just see in Luke chapter 12? In Luke chapter 12, he tells them, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning as you yourselves, uh, as you yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. And we've shown that this group is the Luke group is the Luke 24 worker group that will be here when he knocks, when he comes for his 40 days of the Son of Man. And he's saying when he returns from the wedding. So clearly the wedding is first. And when I was going through all of this with my wife and I started with this part here and then went into all the other details, she looked at me when I said, well, you know, I'm still wondering, would they go to the third heaven and be a part of the wedding and come back? And I said, there's not really much evidence for it, though. And she's like, well, didn't you just say he told him when he comes back from the wedding? You know, it's so obvious to somebody who just who's listening to the storyline from the outside. It becomes pretty obvious, right? He just told them when he returns from the wedding. Who have we been revealing for years that this group is? The Luke 24 group that are going to follow him for 40 days and then remain during seals. So what happened? is I was, I was pondering these things. I said, hold on a second. We know Matthew has a wedding feast. We know where that is. We know Mark has no wedding feast, no nothing, no feast mentioned or anything, no parable of a feast. But guess what happens next? The wedding feast, as we just showed, is seven days long. Who goes to the wedding? Those who are accounted worthy who doesn't get to go to the wedding those who will be part of the resurrection as priests and reign with him for the thousand years right the two separate groups but when he returns from the wedding he said in luke 12 when he returns from the wedding he will sit down serve them and eat with them and when we went to Luke chapter 24, we found these words. When he comes to sit down with them, the third time it was used in Luke 24, he comes to sit down and eat with them. And we showed in the last video that they were being honored with this special meal with the Lord when he comes at the start of his 40 days. We show that they're honored. Why? Because they were a part of this group that was to go. But the Lord is saving them as the watchmen for the end of days. They're the seals workers. 
But what does he do first after the wedding? He said he was coming to eat and serve them first. And when I was in the shower, guess what happened? It dawned on me why after the seven day wedding feast of Luke chapter 14, there's another great banquet. Hello! <laughs> Sorry, did I scare you there? <laughs> There's a great banquet immediately after the seven-day feast. Immediately after. He goes from one parable of a wedding feast to another parable about a great banquet. And it's only in Luke. There's no banqueting of any type in Mark. And there's no banquet even in Matthew. It was just wedding to wedding. This is only found in Luke. And it's immediately told us immediately after the seven day wedding. And who is he coming to? Who, who are the workers during seals that are going to be with him for 40 days that he's going to serve and eat with and have a great banquet with to honor them as the workers for staying because they should have been at the wedding? They're the priests, right? Who are those who take place in the resurrection? Smyrna, the seals workers. Let's have a look and see where this connects. It's going to blow your mind. Luke 14, verse 12. Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and recompense be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, oh, you're going to want to see this one. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor and the maimed, the lame, the blind. Sound familiar? This one just dawned on me as I was reading it. What if we go into Revelation chapter 2 and we look at the Smyrna group? Listen to what it says. I know thy works and thy tribula and tribulation and poverty. And poverty. What did he just say in, this, in, the, in the great banquet? He's not going to invite his friends and brethren and all that stuff and the kinsmen. It's going to be a feast for the poor. For the maimed, the lame, the blind. Smyrna. He's making a feast for Smyrna. Remember, they're the priestly line that have part in the resurrection. I'm going to show you something, but before I get there, we're going to keep going, but we're going to come back to this word for feast because you're about to find out who they are and it's only used twice. Verse 14 of Luke 14. And thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee. For thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. At the what? At the resurrection of the just? At the resurrection of the just, uh, uh, of the righteous? At the resurrection of? What is it? The, the, the justice, the right? Where was the other word I was looking for? Here it is right here. At, uh, and thou shalt be recompensed. So you're going to see two things. The resurrection of the just. And you're going to see this recompense, which is what? You're gonna, he's going to repay. What does repay re mean in this case? A reward. A reward. Do you know what the reward is in relation to what this group gets? They get crowns. Remember, they're going to rule and reign with them as priests. They get crowns. Do you know that, um, let me see where it is here. I think it's Ephesians 2. Let me go double check. In Ephesians 2, you're going to see that the crown, is it Ephesians 2? Da, 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 no. The crown is given at the end. Watch this. 
in uh, 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 19. For what is our hope, our joy, or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Do you guys remember that word for, for coming? It's all Matthew 24. It's all when the Lord returns at the end of the sixth trumpet and returns feet down on the Mount on the Mount of Olives. The crown is given at the end. Even Paul talks about it. The crown is given at the end. Okay. Let's go back into this, into 14. Talking about the great banquet. And what did we see from Luke chapter 20? Again, there was the two groups. Those who were accounted worthy, they're taken. They're the pre-trib group. And then those who would be part of the resurrection of the dead. That's the worker group that is resurrected to remain with him for a thousand years, right? That will rule and reign with him as priests. What does it say about this group? This group in relation to the feast, I'm going to prove to you it's the priestly line. And it's what? Their recompense shall be at the resurrection of the just. Who, who is part of the resurrection of the just? Let's go to Revelation chapter 2 again. Go into the Smyrna group. And of course, what do we know about Smyrna? These are the seals workers. This is the group represented by a Priscilla and Aquila. They're, they're putting their necks on the line for the churches of the Gentiles, which means during the seals time to the end of the Gentile age. And what does it say? He that hath an ear, let him hear. Now, do all the churches say that? Yes. But in relation to understanding something you're going to see a little bit later, is he that hath an ear, let him hear. Who's he talking to when he says it here? He that hath an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit saith unto the churches, he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. So to this group that shall not be hurt by the second death, he's saying, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Smyrna is the only one that is told they wouldn't be hurt by the second death. Smyrna, as we've been teaching for a long time, is the group of workers during seals and with the Lord for the 40 days. They're that entire group we're talking about that take place in that feast with the Lord when he returns after the wedding and he sits and serves them. It is the reason for Luke chapter 14 to have another banquet immediately after the one week banquet because it is that group that he eats it with when he returns from the wedding. And you're gonna see, he says, let him that hath, that, uh, uh, let him, sorry, he that hath an ear, let him hear. And it's about this group that will not be hurt by the second death. Who is the group that's not hurt by the second death? We all know it, right? <clears throat> it says, um, we didn't receive the mark. Um, and they lived and reigned with Christ. Now, you see what's really interesting about this? Let's start right here in verse 4. Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw, this is just a side note. This just came to my thoughts. See, the spirit leading, guys. I love it. And I saw the thrones, and they that sat on them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. Who are those that put their necks on the line? The Smyrna group, the, the Priscilla and Aquila putting their necks on the line. For the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, see, they're witnessing for Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, which actually means on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, who are they? And why did I go into this first? If you guys remember, this is all about the Smyrna group, right? If you remember Luke chapter 24, we just showed this in the last video as a little side note. Interesting how the Spirit is bringing it to connect now. If you remember this, what does he do to them? In Luke 24, this is that seals worker group again, the Smyrna. 
then opened he their understanding. Remember, this word for understanding in all of the Gospels is only found one time, and it is right here for the worker group with them for 40 days that he's serving and eating. It's right here in all of the Gospels. So why am I bringing it up? Because you'll remember in the last video, I shared that it's directly connected to the word for understanding right here in Revelation chapter 13. Those who will have the understanding of the name and the number of the beast they will know who the beast is. They will understand what the mark is and they will refuse it. They will serve and tell others to not take it and understand it. The ones who will have the understanding of it are the seals workers from Luke chapter 24, which is why it is there and in no other gospel is it mentioned. Why does that matter as we're talking about this now? Because listen to the description of them. They were the ones who put their necks on the line to not receive his mark or his name or his image. Hello. This is directly related to the Smyrna group that puts their neck on the line. And because of their understanding of the beast, his system, and his mark, it's telling you right here, they never took it. Isn't that awesome? Because they're the ones that had the understanding. And what does it say? And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead, that means everybody else that died during that time. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. You see, that final resurrection and the judgment, that's not till the end of the millennial reign. The only group that is resurrected when the Lord returns, feet down on the Mount of Olives, is his seals group workers. And, of course, those from the Old Testament, the Jews and the portion of the Jews that were promised their peace on earth, their kingdom on the earth, their millennial reign. That's why Daniel is laying in his plot until the last day as the last verse of daniel 12 says okay those guys do but this is specifically speaking to the seals smyrna workers they are the only ones in this context being spoken about here specifically that will be resurrected from the dead to rule and reign with christ uh to reign lived and reigned with christ a thousand years and what does it say this is the first resurrection. Verse six, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. The only ones that were told the second death would not hurt them was Smyrna. Was Smyrna. What did we read in, in Luke chapter 20? The pre-trib group, those accounted worthy, and what? Those who would take part of the resurrection from the dead? What, what did we read in, in Luke 14? In Luke 14, that second banquet is about those who will be recompensed at the resurrection of the dead. And listen to what it says. On such, the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. What shall they be? Priests. They are the priestly Levitical line. Why? Because they belong to the Father. They are children of God, co-heirs with Christ. A specific group from the pre-trib group. It's telling you exactly, exactly 
who the Smyrna group is. Never took the mark because they were given understanding of all things and they understood the mark. It was easy for them to refuse. Why? Because they were given understanding of all things. In, in 1 John, it says that this group who now has met the Lord will no longer have anybody need to teach them for they will already understand it all themselves. This is what we're preparing for. This is all the Smyrna Seals worker group. And this is their reward with the Lord. And they are priests. Just as the 144,000 are priests of the Levitical line, this is the first group, a small group, that is going to work during the time of seals. Oh, there's more. There's still more. I'm going to prove to you that this second celebration, that this second banquet that's taking place is, is this specific Smyrna group, right? Is this specific uh, uh, Levitical line, which is the priestly line that belongs to the Father. <clears throat> and then I'm going to show you the rest of Luke 14. And I'm going to show you Luke 14, the whole story, is the pre-trib, the wedding, the meal with the disciples, and then going off to work with the Lord. All in order. Look at this. Look at this feast. Remember I told you I was going to share this with you? It's only used two times. It's awesome. Are you ready for this? Luke chapter 5. Jesus calls the first disciples. Well, isn't that special, right? Jesus calls the first disciples. And you want to know why it's awesome? Because you're going to see things here like great multitudes, right? Uh, verse 15. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came to hear him and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Now, somebody's going to say, great multitude, see, this is the rapture group coming to the Lord. Yep. But the escape has already happened. This doesn't mean all of the Mark group. This doesn't mean everybody that is part of the great multitude rapture at the in the seventh year of seals is coming to him at this point. This is a representation <coughs> being said to us of the those Mark people who will be a part of the great multitude rapture are coming. Why? Because 140 some million people vanished. Craziness is broken out on the earth. Bewilderment of mind. They're going to start panicking. <laughs> Almost 2% of the population just went poof. And then the Lord shows up and he's doing all these miraculous things and healing them that we know he's going to do for 40 days. <clears throat> do you guys understand what chapter 5 is? It's the typology of his 40 days beginning. Do you remember Luke in order, brothers and sisters? Luke chapter 1 is, is the, is the pre-trib, is the escape. And the circumcision of the flesh, that eighth day, relating to the seals workers as John the Baptist was, right? Those putting their necks on the line and everything else, right? What do we get in Luke chapter 2? The 40 days of the Son of Man. What do we get in Luke chapter 3? When he returns at the end of six years of seals. What do we get in chapter 4? When he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives, Satan's trying to tempt him because Satan had the last two and a half years of trumpets. Remember, Luke in order is about pre, his 40 days, mid, and post. So what is five? The beginning of the story. Want me to prove it to you? <clears throat> Let's go to Luke, uh, Mark chapter 1. The beginning. The beginning. And what does it start with? A group like John the Baptist. A group like John the Baptist, who is the representation of Luke chapter 1 in relation to the seals workers. The pre-trib happened. See, you got the beginning. 
What's the beginning, guys? The beginning means Taurus. The beginning is Taurus. It's Tuba, It's uh, the Feast of Weeks. But the Feast of Weeks is observed four months early. Four months early is the New Year of Trees. Hello. And then what does it go down to? Then it goes into what? The, the baptism and then what? The 40 days of the Son of Man. Where does this story begin in Luke? Chapter 5 begins the 40 days of the Son of Man gathering his disciples together. It's the same typology. And what are we following here? We're following Luke chapter uh, 14 with the feast, proving that that feast is for the worker group of priests who will put their necks on the line as John the Baptist during seals and will take part in the resurrection to rule and reign with Christ as priests during the millennial reign. Well, in Luke chapter 14, it didn't tell us it was priests. In Luke chapter 14, it talked about a meal that he was going to have with a group of people that related also to the poor, which relates to Smyrna. And it said that their reward would come at the resurrection. So let's see where the connection to the only other place, I mean, it's used twice. It's used in Luke 5, verse 29. Do you think there's a reason why? It's not in Luke 1, 2, 3, 4, but it's at the beginning of the story relating to when he's here for 40 days. <clears throat> Let's see. Watch this. Let's start in verse 26. Luke 5, 26. And they were all amazed. Okay. Who was all amazed? People were amazed, right? The Lord, you got to remember, what do we show? What do we talk about when the Son of Man is coming for 40 days? Do you think he's just going to be whimpering around no he's not going to be running around saying i am the christ come to me he's not going to be doing that he's going to be revealing himself in signs and wonders and miracles as those people from the great multitude that will be a part of the great multitude are coming to him as they're realizing these things that he's doing the rest of the world is probably going to be calling him antichrist because they think antichrist comes first but there will be people that will recognize him. The majority, no. That's why it says he's going to be rejected during the days of the 40 days as Noah's was. But it doesn't mean everybody, right? And that's why we're seeing this connection here too. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and they were filled with fear saying, we have seen strange things today. Used one time. They saw strange, extraordinary things happen. Remember, what was shall be, what is, meaning from Christ until the escape, shall be. Prophecy is hidden in the Old Testament and in the New Testament to be revealed to kings and those who search, right? It is the glory of kings to seek a thing out, right? This is what we're doing, guys. This is him being here, and they're amazed at these strange things that he's doing. They're blowing people away. Verse tw Luke 5, verse 27. You can see it already, can't you? And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the reception of custom, and he said unto him, Follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. Are you ready for this? <clears throat> and Levi made a great feast. And Levi made a great feast. The word's only used two times. What was it? Well, let's go back to Luke 14. What was it that he made? What was the parable immediately after the one week wedding? A great banquet or a great feast? That is to the 
those that will receive the reward at the resurrection of the just. <clears throat> who is he making this fe feast for? Those who are represented as the priestly line who will rule and reign with him during the millennial reign, which is all directed directly related to the Luke 24 group of seals workers who are going to be with him for 40 days when he comes and begins and he calls them and they will follow him. They're the resurrection of the just. And this feast is in Luke 5, which is the typology of him calling his first disciples as while he's here for 40 days. And what's the story we're given by a Levite? For those that don't know what Levite is or the Levitical line is, it is the priestly line. <clears throat> According to the Bible, the tribe of Levi is one of the tribes of Israel, traditionally descended, uh, descended from Levi, the son of Jacob. They are the priestly line under Aaron. They're the priestly line. Who is he having a meal with after the wedding? The priestly line. How do we know? Because those who are resurrected and have part in the resurrection of the dead who will rule and reign with him as priests during the millennial reign. Who are they? They are Smyrna. <laughs> who was Smyrna in history? Fourteenthers. Look at this. And Levi made a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and others that sat down with them. Wow. It's the priestly line connected to the great feast of Luke 14 when he comes to choose his disciples who were told from Luke chapter 12 he would do when he returns from the wedding to sit down, serve them, and eat with them. You want to see what he says to them next? Let's follow the storyline from the beginning. Look at what he does. He's going to heal a man on the Sabbath. What do you think that's a typology of? He's going to heal a man on the Sabbath. What's the true Sabbath? The 15th. Remember, the true Sabbath, the Jews know it, right? They always go the weekend, Friday into Saturday, Friday into Saturday. Yet, they follow the moon. And the moon doesn't line up every Friday into Saturday. We've talked about it many times. So what did they do? They just go along with it because it's easier the way society is in the world right now. Because this is the weekend to everybody. They don't want to have it on a Monday and then the following month on a Thursday and the following month on a Tuesday. So they made it simple. It's still every seven days, so they do it on a Friday to Saturday. But the true one, if you're following the cycle with the moon, is the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th of every month. So what do we see? He healed a man on the Sabbath. And what does he do? Then he has a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven day wedding. He'll return on the eighth day after the wedding. And what does he do? He chooses his disciples who he told when he returns from the wedding for them to be girded about ready and waiting when he returns from the wedding and what does he do when he returns from the wedding he has a meal with them and sits down and serves them so far what are we seeing heals a man on a sabbath which is those who are accounted worthy the pre-trib escape a man has been healed on the sabbath right then he has the wedding then he has a great banquet with those who were honored as co-heirs with Christ that should have been here, but they were chosen to remain as watchmen to be revealed in the last time who have a place reserved for them in heaven. And then what does he do? 
Well, this is the beginning of his 40 days. And he starts off with having a meal with them. The proof of who this meal is with is found in the feast and related to Luke chapter 5, which is the type of him coming at the beginning of 40 days, who is choosing his disciples, who then finds Levi, the Levitical priestly line, who makes a feast. Who is this group? Those that will be part of the resurrection of the just. Who are they? Those who are Smyrna, who will take part in the second uh, in the resurrection, who will rule and reign with them for a thousand years, and who will have no worries in relation to the second death. You following? So what's the story? Healing a man on a Sabbath, pre-trib escape, seven-day wedding feast. When he returns to have a banquet, great banquet meal with his disciples that were waiting for that were waiting for him. <clears throat> Remember what it said also? What did it say in Luke chapter 12? That they would gird themselves, right? They would gird themselves, and he comes and he comes to shed light. We talked about this when he comes and he comes to shed light to them that are in the darkness. We showed all those scriptures that are connected to the girding themselves. It's everywhere. We talked about uh, Isaiah 9 when he comes to shed the light in the darkness after the first attack that had happened in northern Israel. <clears throat> right? This is the group that's going to shed the light. Spirit-filled group that will shed the light on the light group of Mark during seals. So we're following the storyline. He has this banquet with them. Okay? Verse uh, 14 and sent his servant at supper time and say to them that were bidden come for all things are now ready and they start making excuses right they start making excuses oh, i got this i just got a new cow i got a new ox blah 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 blah. and they come back and not enough people had come right and he says and the servant said the lord uh it is done as thou hast commanded and yet there is room he says, go into the highways, the hedges, right? And compel them to come. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper, right? They won't get to taste of this supper of his, which is an expense, right? An expense, a cost. Now listen to this. <clears throat> Here's now coming to the end of that meal. And what's going on? He's now here for 40 days. He's about to go out. And what do you see? And there went great multitudes. Okay? There are now great multitudes. There, there's a representation of a portion of the Mark group that is represented in the great multitudes that are coming to follow him because they're seeing these miracles and these things that he's doing. Great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father and mother, and wife and children and brethren and sisters, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not hear, does not bear his cross, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sit not down first, and count the cost? You see? Where was he counting the cost? It was the root word to the meal that he was formed, that he was giving. Okay? And count the cost. Whether he has sufficient to finish it. Lest happily, after he hath laid the foundation. Hello. How many times we cover this, guys? When is the foundation being laid? During seals the foundation is laid during seals by who by the apostles remember the apostles are the ones laying the spiritual foundation while there's going to be a physical foundation for the temple 
being laid in the midst of seals when they've been removed from the land, a small group will be brought back and they will lay the foundation only during seals. It will only be the foundation laid at that time. And this is what I was showing in Ephesians chapter two. We know who the ones who are laying the foundation, right? And it says, now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief corner stone. You see? Apostles are the layers of the foundation during seals. We showed when you go to Revelation 21, the apostles laid the foundation. The 144 relate to the walls and the rebuilding. And the, the 12 tribes, which is the end of trumpets, when they go out during the millennial reign, people will enter through the 12 gates that represent the 12 tribes who are going out during the millennial reign and will lead people to come into the Lord to worship and praise and so forth. But the foundation is laid during the apostles, uh, by the apostles during seals. And what are the disciples doing? They're the ones going out, proclaiming the gospel, telling people to keep from the mark, protecting them, doing all sorts of signs and wonders. Because remember, they're going to have that anointing at the 50th day. Just like the apostles, they're going to receive that Holy Ghost anointing at the 50th day. And when they receive that anointing, they will be doing signs and wonders and miracles just as Christ was. You see, there's such a special group that they will be resurrected. They will even take part in the resurrection at the end of days. Who else was resurrected? Christ? Because they're co-heirs with them. Listen to this. Let's keep going. Verse 14, 29. Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all behold it and begin to mock him, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king? See? What king when he comes what? At the end of seals, he's coming as king and high priest, right? Melchizedek. <clears throat> or what king? Going to make war with another king. Hello. Seals, he lays the foundation. At the end of seals, he comes as high priest and king as Melchizedek. And what does he do? He's going to make war first, right? He's going to go to the Antichrist, but the Antichrist isn't going to want to sit down and have this great deal. What's going to happen? He's going to make war with them. He knows he's going to be able to defeat them with his group. And then what? Or else, while the other is yet a great, uh, a great way off, he sendeth an embassage and desireth conditions of peace. When does he make peace? At the seventh seal. At the seventh seal. See, while yet what? While yet another is, is a far way off. So what does Christ do at the, at the end of seals to start trumpets? He makes peace with all people, right? Because now he's here. He's come on heavenly Mount Zion. He's destroyed them. He laid the foundation right through his workers. Then there's going to be war against the Antichrist. He's going to defeat them. Then, while yet another is a great way off. Who's that? Mid-trumpets when Satan's coming. What does the Lord do first? He's going to make peace. And then, of course, when Satan comes, he'll no longer be a great way off. It's all in order. He says, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Hello. This entire storyline starts from the escape, the seven-day wedding feast, the feast with the disciple workers that were chosen, that were waiting, that he came back and served, who will have part in the resurrection, who are clearly the priestly line as the, Levit as the Levitical line. 
he's telling them during this time that's coming while they're going to be serving him this cost of discipleship is going to be during the laying of foundation during the time of war at the end of seals and when he makes peace at the very end of seals count that cost if you don't count that cost if you're not prepared to give everything up then don't consider being my disciple because it will cost everything including potentially not everyone but most it says or many it says it says and some of you in smyrna will put your necks on the line all in order he is telling them the cost of what it will be during seals to follow him as a disciple the entire conversation is to the disciple group and the cost of following them as a disciple which is directly related to the luke chapter 24 group smyrna this entire story is about that group who will follow him till the end of seals and remember what i said in smyrna if this entire group is those being counted and counting the cost of what it will be to follow him in his will during seals putting their necks on the line <coughs> which is all about the luke 24 group what does he tell them He's speaking directly to them. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. These are the seals workers and the entire conversation in Luke chapter 14 after the wedding is all to them as the priestly portion of the two tribes who are of the priestly line within those two tribes that will work during seals and look at what he tells them at the very end after he tells them what the cost will be and to be ready for it how fitting this may very well be the last video from ministry revealed because if we have understood this time, what a way to make sure we are prepared for the cost that it will be. And here's what he tells them at the end. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his savor, have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill but men cast it out look at what he says he that hath an ear to hear let him hear and what was it about a warning to the cost of being his disciple who are again his disciples who will have understood the cost ahead of time and be willing to put their necks on the line he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches and in this case smyrna he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death and those who will not be hurt of the second death were those who were given understanding of the mark of the beast and the number of his name who refused it having put their necks on the line who will take part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power but they shall be priests who had that meal with them after the wedding they shall be priests of god and of christ and shall reign with him 
a thousand years. Brothers and sisters, are you ready? Are we prepared? I pray that I have done all that I can, all that the Spirit has led me in to reveal and to make understood to all he brings to hear it and to receive it. It all begins in this playlist right here. If you're new and you're a watchman, if you're new and you're seeking and searching the Lord diligently to understand, this is where you're supposed to be. If you're a watchman and you've been trying to understand and search out your purpose in the Lord, this may be where you're supposed to be. This ministry is in the 14 years of Revelation. And we've been called the 14ers. And the original Smyrna were called 14 thirds. Theirs was because of days, ours is because of years. You can't make this stuff up if you tried. You didn't even know it existed. And neither did I. I believe, brothers and sisters, that we are being prepared. And if your choice is not to be a part of his disciple workers, then fear not. Because I don't believe we're only preparing workers here. We're also preparing people in Christ by the Spirit to prayerfully be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And if you're prepared and you're watching and praying and you're a watchman, this video has just laid out for you how to make sure you're prepared. Because the workers of seals will be in the Lord's presence. As 1 Peter 1 said, their faith will be no longer needed because they will have met the Lord in his presence and will receive the revelation of understanding from him and will receive the anointing from the Holy Ghost at the 50th day. Nobody will ever need to teach them again, for they will have the understanding of all things. But you must be prepared for the cost of it all. Are you ready? Have you really counted the cost? Are you aware that family and friends may not be accounted worthy to escape and would be left behind? Are you prepared? Are you willing to forsake them? Meaning, are you willing to, to leave them and do the Lord's will? And I don't mean this in a negative way. I mean this to have yourself spiritually and mentally prepared for this. Does it mean they're not going to be a part of the great multitude rapture? Absolutely not. Because they will be witness to what? They will be witness to everything you told them before it happened. We've been saying this for years. We tell our family and we tell our friends. We don't beat it into them every day, every week. But we remind them every few months. I do it maybe once or twice a year to close family and friends. And we have, I have a brief conversation that they don't want to hear. But I can guarantee you this. Once it all begins, there is no way 
they will be able to deny everything they heard before it happened now see taking place. You can't say somebody got lucky when tens of millions of people vanished from off the earth and they were told in advance that it was coming. But will you be willing to walk away from them knowing you had already told them these things? Will you be willing to walk away from them? Mothers, fathers, wives, husbands, children, children? Would you be willing if the Lord is calling you to be his disciple? You see, this is no simple cost to be counted. Especially when we're still in the flesh, right? These are all the people we love. But who do you love more? This is the cost. This entire storyline from this second feast is all about his disciple Smyrna workers, Luke 24, Luke 12, after the wedding. Those who will be part of the resurrection of the dead. Doesn't that just sound like something made believe? This group is going to be a part of a group of people so special that they're going to be ruling and re- they're going to be reigning with him as priests during his millennial kingdom on the earth. This is exactly who he's speaking to. Do you have ears to hear it? Can you withstand all of this to be his disciple? Because it will be for about seven years that you will have to endure if you make it to the end of seals. Remember, the Lord will give you understanding. He's going to open your understanding. What's been taking place here in this ministry is the preparation for when he comes. And for those of you who are still here, chosen as workers, prepared as workers, this is the preparation so that there will be no surprise. You will be ready, willing, and able because you understood these things beforehand. You won't be surprised when he comes and opens unto you the understanding. That's all I could say. He's not going to leave you hanging, but you won't have a glorified body. You're not going to the wedding, but you will be honored with a feast with the Lord himself at the beginning of the 40 days. And you will be anointed by the Holy Ghost in what we have called Acts 2.0, in an anointing greater than the disciples did even 2,000 years ago. Because this is the culmination of the end of all things. This power and this authority that will be given is so powerful, it will be the end of your faith. There'll be no longer a need for faith because you were in its presence. This is the typology of that woman when the Lord says in Luke in John 8, go and sin no more. What do you think the typology could have been? Go and sin no more. People sin still all the time. Not purposely. We repent, right? This is the go and sin no more group. And I hope and pray, brothers and sisters, that it has been understood and that we're all about to be in each other's presence with the Lord, either in the third heaven 
or at his feet here at a table being served with him. I hope and pray this is the last video, brothers and sisters. And I believe with all of my heart that it is. This is the end of all ends to the 70s. The end. There was no fifth year and then sixth year, it's yours. There was no seventh year and then eighth year. There's no ninth year and twelfth year. It's 70 after four years. Brothers and sisters, I appreciate you always. I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for your encouragement. I thank you for those who are intercessors over us and praying and interceding over each other throughout this ministry. We need it, right? People attack us all the time because they refuse to even look at the intro of who the Gospels are speaking to. But to all of you who have seen it, <clears throat> to all of you who understand it, there's no going back. You can't unsee it once you have understood it. It's all truth, and it is revealed in his word from in the beginning to the end of Revelation 22. And I believe we are absolutely here. Thank you always for everything. Thank you for being a part of this with me and my family and with each other. I love you. God bless you. God bless your families. Be ready. Pray and watch always. We'll see you very soon. Bye for now.